The Bible says, cast thy bread upon the waters, for thou shalt find it after many days. Give a portion to seven and also to eight, for thou knowest not, now notice this, for thou knowest not what evil shall be upon the earth. I say amen, we don't know what's coming. If the clouds be full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth, and if the tree falls toward the south or toward the north in the place where the tree falleth, there shall it be. He that observeth the wind shall not sow. He that regardeth the clouds shall not reap. Going to start out this morning with a little uh, story that Brother Mike Murdoch heard him tell one time. He said there was a couple came to him and they were having all kinds of fi financial difficulties. They, they were, uh, were going under. I mean, they were three months behind on their house payments and you know, uh, everything was just dried up. And Mike, Mike, knowing in his heart that they were, if they were tithers, that wouldn't be going on in their lives. Amen. If they were tithers the way they ought to be, God would be supplying their need. He knew that if uh, they were in the will of God uh, in their finances, that, uh, you know, the blessing would be upon their lives. So he knew something was spiritually wrong for them to be in such a shape. So he asked him a question, and I'm going to ask you this question. Are you a tither? Are you a tither? He asked him, are you a tither? I get calls all the time. And uh, I, let me think. Probably 100% of the time people who call me are those who's wanting a handout, people that are, you know, uh, and, and, I, and the first thing that I ask them, where do you go to church? Where do you, where do you pay your tithes? Oh, I don't go to church. I'm not the tither. When they tell me that, they might as well just hung the phone up on me right then because I am not going to help a thief. That's good preaching right there. Mike knew, uh, he, asked, he, he said, are you a tither? And they, they both replied, yes, we're tithers. Mike knew that either he knew that they had to be lying or God's word would be wrong. God would be lying. And uh, Mike told the people, I've got to choose between you and God. And he said, I choose to believe God. He said, I've known God a lot longer than I've known you. And, and so I believe that you're the ones that's on the lying side. Knew, uh, Mike knew that, uh, you know, that uh, God takes care of his own. How many of you in here this morning took care of your children when they was growing up. Now, there might be a few that didn't, but I tell you, if you're a real dad, you take care of your children. Well, Mike knew that if this was one of God's child, they shouldn't be in this mess. Uh, and these two were, uh, uh, they, they, while they were there, they, they were wanting Mike to help them out. Mike's good about helping people, bailing people out, if you know if they're good people. So uh, he wanted some proof. I'll tell you, before I give out several hundred dollars, I want some proof too. Amen, how'd you get in this mess? Amen, and uh, he asked him, said, uh, if you're a tither, I want you to prove it to me. I want you to bring, now Mike was willing to help them, and Mike, Mike could have paid their house off, but uh, he said, bring your checkbook tonight, and I want to see where, uh, if you're paying your tithes, and I, I, I want to see where you're paying your tithes. See, Mike, Mike said that the soil is just as important as the seed. Everybody get that? You mean you, come on now, you can take good seed, you can have the best seed and put it in the bad soil and the good seed won't produce a harvest if it's planted in the wrong soil. You've got to have the proper soil. Somebody say that, somebody needs to remember that. Somebody says, well, I send my tithes off that little church down the road. Does that little church down the road preach the blessing of the Lord? Do they believe in tithing? I'd never take uh, good seed and throw it on top of concrete, would you? Amen, seed uh, has to get down into the ground. You can't just cast good seed on concrete and expect it to give a harvest. And why'd you say that? I'm gonna tell you why I said it, because there's a lot of church and churches today and a lot of pastors fighting against prosperity. Amen, I've heard them make some 
real dogmatic re- remarks about prosperity. And so, uh, and, uh, and uh, if, if you're fighting again prosperity and you're fighting again seed time and harvest, amen, listen, if, if people are fighting again, it, then you sure don't want to put no seed in it. It'll just, it won't produce the harvest. You, you've got to have good soil to have a good harvest. Amen, You've, you're just throwing your seed away if those people in that church, if that pastor's fighting again prosperity, amen, you need, uh, the, uh, and they're fighting again seed time and harvest, fighting again the word of God, you might as well just throw your seed in the trash can. Can the church say amen? That's good preaching right there. We're preparing for an evil day. We're preparing for things that are ahead. <laughs> Michael's wanting to know, where are you sowing your seed at? Amen, show me the proof. I can look at your checkbook and tell if you love God. That's good preaching right there. Amen. Listen, your seed will only produce as good as the soil is working. uh, Listen, the soil provides the future for a seed. A seed, come on somebody, the soil proves the quality of that seed. Amen. Those two, uh, uh, that man and that wife couldn't provide Brother Mike uh, proof that they had paid any tithes. Finally, both of them admitted, we've just paid two, our tithes two times in our life. Think about that. Paid their tithes two times in their life. Joe uh, Mike was making sort of a joke about it and he said, you mean to tell me you've paid your tithes two times in your whole life and you're still alive? Come on. He was joking with me. He, he said, you mean you've stolen your tithe and all, <laughs> all of your life and you still got your nose on your face? God could have took your nose off. It's a one to me that uh, people steals from God that you've got anything. Mike said, let me, let, let me get this straight. He said, the only, uh, you've only returned your tithe, you've only returned your 10% to God. You've only give God back what belongs to him only two times in your entire life and you're bewildered over your poverty. He said, did you not realize you've been dishonoring God all your life? Come on, I'm preaching better than some of y'all shouting right now. We got some God robbers in here, I guess. Hey Amen. Listen, something about, these people uh, didn't believe God. They didn't believe his word. They didn't trust God. They didn't believe God would do what he'd do or they'd have been paying their tithe all along. People who don't pay their tithe, don't give their offering, don't believe God nor his word, they are not trusting in him. He told that crowd, he was preaching to a crowd of people and uh, he was telling them this same story. He, he said, if, if they had any of, he said, if you people, his point that congregation, he said, if, you, if you've got anything that belongs to God, if you've got God's tithing in your checking account, if you've got God's tithe in any of your accounts, he said, you better get it out and you better put it in that house of God. He repeated, it's a dishonor to steal from God. Bible said the tithe is the Lord's. How many Bible says the tithe is the Lord's? If yours don't say that, you better, you better get you another Bible. You ain't gotten the word of God. The tithe is proof of your honor to God. The Bible says the tithe is the Lord's. And listen at this, it's not only the Lord's, it is holy. I said it's holy. I said it's holy. Amen. I fear God when it comes to holy things. I fear God when it comes to touching anything that belongs to God. I wouldn't touch his honor. I wouldn't touch his glory. I wouldn't touch his, 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 uh, the, what belongs to him. I'd be afraid to. If I put what's God's in my account, it becomes a curse to everything in my accounts. I, don't, I wouldn't want nothing that belonged to God. In my checking account, my savings account, any other account, I wouldn't want it in there if it belonged to God. It will contaminate, it will curse everything around it. Hello, somebody, hit me preach. You remember what happened to Achan? 
when he took what belonged to God, I have to explain this this morning. Come to me. I need to tell this for those who this is new to. You say, you new around? No, uh, you've been in here some of you 10, 20 years. Some of them ain't never heard this before. Listen by radio or television or by internet. This is new to somebody, and I want them to get it too. How many of you want them to get it too? The Israelites were getting ready to cross over into the Jordan into the promised land. And Jericho was the first place that they were going to take. It was the first place they were going to conquer. And so... God had already told them before they went in there, he'd done more than Joshua. He said, the silver and the gold is mine, all the riches, amen, that you take out of Jericho, uh, it's to be put into the treasury. It didn't belong to them. Uh, it, It was the first city that they were gonna conquer, so God requires first. Everybody say, God requires first. God requires the first day of the week. God requires the first fruits. God, come on, he requires us to keep him first. And he said, if you'll keep me first, I'll let all these other things fall in place for you. Amen. God required their first fruits. It was God's. It was holy. It was the tithe. So, so they had obey it. Would, uh, if they would obey what God told them, the blessings would fall upon them. God required the tithe right off the top, not af- after everybody else got their cut. You know, a lot of people, they'll take their paycheck and they'll get everybody, ever Tom, Dick, Harry, give them what belongs to them and never think about their tithe. But God said, you gotta keep me on top. You gotta keep me first. He, not a, come on, not after everybody else gets their cut. And uh, a lot of people's got the attitude, well, if I got anything left over, I'll, I'll, I'll tip or I'll put a little bit in the church. But no, God said, first is mine. Jericho was the first city, so he required the first. Putting God first proves that you're gonna trust him to pay your house payment. Amen, putting God first proves that you believe God will pay your car payment. Putting God first proves that you believe that God's gonna pay your light bill, your phone bill, your grocery bill, put food on the table, put clothes on you and your children, put clothes on their, or shoes on their feet. Well, Israel marched around the walls seven days and on the seventh day the walls began to fall and they took the city and they took everything in it. But there was one guy who thought, nobody's looking. Nobody's ever going to know it. So that piece of gold, I'm going to take it. And that, that uh, Babylonian garment and a, a few other things, he picked them up. And the Bible said he put it among his own stuff. He put it, he, he took something that, but that was God's gold, no matter how small of amount it was. That was God's silver. That was God's Babylonian garment. Everything that was in Jericho belonged into the treasury. But here you've always got those few in your church. You've always got them. That think God ain't a watching. Oh, People do the same thing today Aiken did. They, they take their tithe and they put it in their checking account. Nobody knows it. Nobody will see it. Wrong. Pastor may not see it. Deacons may not see it. But let me tell you, whew, I got a secret for you. God knows it. God sees it. Come on, somebody. I don't want a dime to keep me from the blessings of God. I don't want 10 cent out of a dollar to keep me in under a closed heaven, under a curse. People selling out for a dime. He didn't realize it when he stole that golden stuff that, uh, that, that it, he didn't really take to heart that that was real. Some of y'all sitting here right now thinking, oh, that, man, that, that preacher just trying, he just preaching that, trying to get some money in his own pocket. Let me tell you something. God's already took care of me for the rest of my life. I, I'm fixed and, you, you know, and I've always said God is my source. 
God, oh, let me tell you, I serve the God that can put, bring water from a rock. I serve a God that can cause the ravens to bring me steak and bread. I serve a God that can let it rain manna from heaven. Somebody help me pray. God is my source and he always will be. I've said it time and time again. I'm trying to get something to you. God's already got something to me. God wants to get it to you. Somebody shout amen. God's, God's wanting to get something to you. Hallelujah. Achan didn't realize it, but when he stole that, that money from God and that garment and stuff, that he put a death sentence on himself. And I'm telling you, it's going to catch up with you. If you're stealing God's money, you ain't been paying your time, it's going to catch up with you. I ain't coming back to church. Well, go ahead. It's going to catch up with you down the road anyway. Anything you stole from God... Anything you stole from God to pay your house payment, your car payment, amen, any other payment, let me tell you, you put it among that stuff, let me tell you, and you stole from God, I'm telling you, you lie will lose your house down the road. You come, I'm gonna preach the truth to you because I love you enough to let you know you don't put, you don't steal from God. Preach, I didn't come here to hear that day. Nobody else, well, there's a few of you like this. Come on, how many knows this has put the blessing on your house? How many knows you can't keep what you stole from God? God requires interest too. That's good preaching right there. Some of y'all sweating cold bullets right now. You ought to be if you've been stealing from God because you got trouble coming down the road. There's an evil day coming. There's a day you may not be able to make those payments. Come on, you better, you better stay under a heaven that's open where you can afford to, come on, you might say, I got a little savings right now. Well, it can be gone tomorrow, honey. Let me tell you, it can be gone tomorrow. That's good, you better keep God first. You business boys, let me tell you something. Y'all better keep God first in your business. All you business women, got business, you better keep God first in it. That's good preaching right there. Somebody make up for the God stealers and give God a hand clap. Somebody make up. How many tithers we got? How many givers we got in here today? Thank God. See, he didn't realize, Achan didn't realize, but man, I'm bringing a curse down on my wife. I'm bringing a curse down on my kids. I'm bringing a curse, amen, down on my grandchildren. Uh, uh, the the uh, money that I should be laying up for them, uh, you know, in the future, got no money and ain't going to be able to leave them nothing. God said you're to give an inheritance to your children and your children's children. Amen. And I'll tell you, if the devils are taking it, you ain't going to have no future. The evil day. Somebody shout the evil day. Are you prepared for the evil day? Boy, I've been preparing for it all my life, brothers and sisters. I've been a tither since the day one. Thank God. I'm glad it's the best thing I ever did. He didn't realize that he's bringing a curse down on his kids, his grandkids, his animals. It even brought a curse down on the children of Israel. They were three million of them, and three million of them was hindered by that one man's. That's good. How can you prove that? Well, the Bible said that. After Jericho, there's another little town up here called Ai, and they were going to go up there, and a few of the uh, guys that got, I think for some reason, somehow or another, we did this ourselves. Let me tell you, you ain't doing nothing on your own. Get to thinking you're doing it by yourself. Bible said not uh, that you better remember that it's he that giveth us power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant with us. It's God that makes us rich. It's the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich with no sorrow with it. Better remember that, guys. You better keep God first. God, God, he better be kept first, or God can pull the God can pull the plug anytime he gets ready. That's good preaching right there. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, AI did, AI was just a little city, just a little old bitty thing. Some of them guys thought, well, we'll go up there and we'll we'll uh, we'll beat them by ourselves. We don't need everybody, you know. Let me tell you, when they went up there, the men of AI, just that little city come running out, and they started killing them one right after another. Israel was on the run, and Joshua buried his face between his knees and began to cry out to God, God, what's going on? Why could we not stand before our enemy? Let me tell you, without the blessing of the Lord, without the power of God, you'd be surprised what you could not do. Come on, I can't do nothing without God. I think about it this morning. He's divine, and we're the branches, and without him... 
I can be nothing. I can do nothing. If he withdrew his blessing from me today, I'd be broke by the morrow. Come on, somebody help me pray. Let me tell you, it's God's blessing. And I tell you, I'm going to depend on it till the day I die. Somebody lift your hand and thank God for the blessing that, that maketh rich with no sorrow with it. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Some of y'all think I'm just up here preaching an old fairy tale, just an old gimmick. I prophesy to you, you're going to find out the hard way. Yeah, you're going to find out the rough way. They some that thought that just a moment ago. He just he got them all suckered. and Well, we'll see who's the sucker after a few days. Somebody say, bring it on, pastor. Man, I wish I hadn't have come to it. Yeah, I know it. But you're going to get it while you're here. Somebody hit me pretty. I don't have to take that. Well, let me tell you, you better take it from a little preacher than to take it from the Holy Ghost than to take it from God. Somebody praise him right now. That's good preaching. Hallelujah. Well, Ai whipped the socks off of Israel. And uh, Joshua asked God, what's going on? God said they couldn't stand before their enemies because they had took the forbidden thing, the accursed thing. They had took something that had, you know, it would be a blessing to them if they had to give it to God, put it where it was supposed to be. But they took something and it become accursed. It become accursed. And, and what happened, uh, God said, we're going to have, and paraphrasing, he's saying, you've got to get that mess straightened out. You've got to get that out of the camp. It's, uh, stole from God. Amen. You know what it cost at Aiken? Well, just this little bit of gold, little garment. It costed him his life. God told Joshua to stone him. How, I thought, my God, can you imagine that? They took him, made him stand in front of three million people, took his kids, put them out there in, three, in front of three million people, his grandkids if he had any, all of his animals, everything the man had, they wanted to get rid of it just like you'd need to get rid of a cancer. They had them stand out there in front, and everybody took stones. You say, that sounds cruel. You, I'm telling you, you've got to deal with sin. You've got to deal. Come on. They killed every one of them. Then they burn them. They burn them to a crisp. I mean, God's, you've got to get rid of this mess. Somebody say, you better get rid of it before it gets rid of you. Another example. Adam and Eve, they were told, that they were not to eat or the, touch the forbidden tree in the midst of the garden. He said, the day you eat it, the, the day you take of it, you're going to die. Some people don't believe nothing the Bible says. In the very beginning, in the book of Genesis, it, it starts warning about touching things that are holy. That tree belonged to God. God said, you can have everything else, but this is mine. And God says you can have everything else, the whole 90%, but this is my tithe. This, this, this belongs to me and it's holy and, and the day you touch it. God said the day you eat of that tree, you're gonna die. Well, the devil talked to him and began to lie to him and tell him it ain't really what it means and that's the way the devil talks to some of, you know, people listening to radio, people sitting in here. It's not that serious. Honey, let me tell you, God's a serious-minded God. Help me preach. God said the day you eat it, you're gonna die. Adam and Eve let the devil talk them into sin. They ate the forbidden fruit, and that day they spiritually died. Amen, and they run from the presence of God. Or oh, y'all hear me. They ran from God. And boy, you start stealing from God Last thing you want to do is get around the presence of God. Come on. Last thing you want is things of God. Well, here's what happened. Adam and Eve, Eve ate that fruit and, and they died spiritually first of all and then the Bible said that God had them put out of the Garden of Eden. Can you imagine living in a paradise? You didn't have to toil, you didn't have to I mean, if you did anything, if you worked, the labor, it was fun. I mean, you enjoyed everything you were doing. It was just a paradise, and it was a joy for them to get up in the morning. But when they sinned, they stole what belonged to God. A curse came on them, and they were thrown out of that garden, and they had to sweat 
start sweating and toiling. They sweat and toiled for the rest of their lives and eventually died naturally. Brother, let me tell you, when you touch something of God, it's a fearful thing. God will kick you out of your garden. Hello? God will t- kick you out of your paradise. I'm preaching. Some of y'all ought to be thanking God you're hearing the truth this morning. I can't emphasize it. You know, it's funny too. Thought just hit me. Adam and Eve agreed together, you know. Dumb and dumber. Bible talked about Ananias and Sapphire. They agreed. Come on. They begin to talk. They done made God a vow, done made God a promise. And I want to tell you people while I'm on it right now, some of you make vows to God. You better be careful of those vows. You better be careful when you make a vow in the house of God, especially when the wind of the spirits are moving. I fear, I would fear to make a $5 pledge and not pay it. Some of y'all's got pledges out there right now. Hey man, our youth, uh, yes, they had to, they had to, I didn't do this, I didn't have this plan, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Our youth is going on a youth trip and there's 20 some hundred dollars that has not come in on that and they had to, the church had to write a check for it. So somebody made a vow to God that the church is having to pay for Come on, help me preach. That's good preaching right there. Don't, don't, don't get mad. But if I, if you think that you made a vow, you'll maybe check back there uh, with Tina. She's got the books and knows everybody's name who vowed a dollar. Some of the children vowed. You need to teach them children. You made a vow. You made a promise to God. That was serious, honey. Don't you let them go without... Paying that, if it's $5, $10, are you being mean? No, I'm trying to train up our children in the way they should go. So the church is going to have to pay somebody's vow. It's not right. If you've made a vow, Tina, some of them don't know who you are. Raise your hand. She's got the book. If you, it, 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 some of y'all make vows every time. Some people, Tina's sharing with me one time about some people make vow every time. Every time we have a pledge raising around here, people make vow and they never do pay it. And I sat, thought to myself, I, you know, I don't ask her who does and who don't. Right there she sits. I don't ask her. That's between you and God. I don't know if you made one or not. This was not, this is not in my notes. You can come up here, right? Here's my notes. It's not in my notes. I'm just telling you, it's what happened. And if you made a vow, the Bible said it's better for you not make a vow than to make a vow and break it. Well, I don't know if I made one or not. Well, honey, you're the one. You better get to that bookkeeper and you better find out are you the one because God ain't forgot. Somebody shout, God don't forget. God's got a longer memory than an elephant. (laughs) Let me tell you, God's got a good memory. Ananias and Sapphire, they got in agreement. They ain't nobody gonna know it but me and you. Ain't nobody. Nobody else gonna know that we have, uh, you know, we made this vow. We made a promise to God. We made it in church and everybody's listening. Uh, they're all the Apostle Peter. Uh, they're, they're all the church members were. And we raised our hands and said, yeah, I've got some land I'm gonna sell and, and we're gonna bring the money and we're gonna give it to the church. That's exactly what they did and that's exactly what people do when they make a vow around here. And you know the good thing about our vow making around here, this is the truth and I'm gonna say it right now, it's the Holy Spirit that comes in here. And we don't just do it when we want to do it, we wait till the winds are blowing. We wait till God says. And, and, and sometimes it might look at the wrong, like it's the wrong day, the wrong time, uh, maybe the smallest crowd or whatever, whenever God says do it. But we go ahead and do it. And God told me one time, he said, David, as long as you'll obey me, you'll never have to use gimmicks or nothing to raise money. We've done some supernatural things around here. My, 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 my. We brought some of the greatest preachers in here, singers in here, and it blows the mind of people what we do around here. We're on television and all, you know why? And radio all over the world, it's because God trusts us with money. He knows me and Lisa, we wouldn't take a dime of it. 
I would and I'd be afraid that God would cook my goose. Well, Ananias and Sapphire, they agreed to get, you know, they, they thought nobody gonna know it. Peter, Peter won't know it. Pastor won't know it. None of them gonna know about this. Amen. And so what we better do or what we're gonna do, honey, there's a pretty dress down there at the dress store. <laughs> With this extra money, we'll take it and get you that dress and get you them shoes and I just saw a nice, I just saw a nice horse and chariot down there and I, whoo, help me preach. I'm gonna go down there and I'm gonna buy it. Nobody gonna know it. But there's one problem. God was watching. The Holy Ghost, that they made the vow. They made the vow in, in the presence of God. Brother, when you make vows around here and the presence of God is moving, you better be careful because it's more than just me that you're making them vows to in the church. You're making it in front of the Holy Ghost. That's good preaching. That's good preaching. Come on, bring it on, Pastor. Come on, bring it on, Pastor. I'm going to. Mm, my Lord. Ananias and Sapphire lied to God, lied to the Holy Ghost, and here came, here come Ananias in there first, and Peter said, you sold the land for so much? He said, yeah. Said, while it was yours, the Holy Ghost revealed to Peter what they had done, and that's why sometimes he'll reveal to me things that's going on in church. I, I don't never ask Tim, don't ask nobody who's paying their tithes or not. The Holy Ghost knows, though. Yeah. He points it out sometimes. And uh, anyway, the Holy Spirit, he rose up in Peter and he said, they, they lied to God, they lied to me. And Peter said, that, wasn't it yours? You could have done anything with you while it was yours, but when you gave it to God, when he gave it to God, it was no longer his, it was God. Somebody shout, it was God's then. Well, you know what happened? Bible says that, Anna, uh, that Peter dropped dead. We talk a while ago in the Old Testament. We're talking in the New Testament now. We're talking right now. This is New Testament stuff. This is when, amen, the church was birthed. The baptism of the Holy Ghost was poured out. And all, amen, P P Peter dropped dead right in, or, or the guy dropped dead right at Peter's feet. feet. Then all of a sudden, here come his wife in there and Peter asked her to. Peter asked her. Have you sold it for so much? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, why have you agreed together to lie? They agreed together to lie. Man and wife, you can be big shots if you want to and lie to one another, but you ain't gonna get around God. Come on, oh, honey, it ain't, oh, come on now. You better be careful, couples. That's good couple. Come on, come on, somebody shout. Better be careful, husband. Better be careful, wife, when you get in agreement to steal something from God. My wife come to me and said, David, we, we ain't gonna pay our tithes this week. I think we ought to start keeping our minds. say, you're a big fool. I would, I'd say, you done went crazy, woman. You know me. Come on, somebody. She'd never do that. And I'm telling you, I'd think she'd went crazy. I'd think she'd went crazy. She told me not to steal my tithe. Amen. There's a lot of times uh, she'll find a, like this week, she found a, a letter that, uh, I, you know, to, a, to somebody. God told me while I was uh, listening to him, send them, send them some money. She never questions me. She never says, I don't think yours. No, no. She thinks I ought to sow it. I believe it's the week before that. God said, do it again. Uh, an another time God said, I want you to send some money. You know, and I, and I sent it. And she don't never question it. She don't never ask me how much you're giving because she knows, I told her the other day when, when that letter sat in there, she was, uh, I said, that's the reason that we're blessed. That's the reason we are prosperous. Hello, somebody. That's the reason I'm blessed. Because of my giving. Amen. Let me tell you something. Ananias and Sapphire both died and was buried that day because they stole something that belonged to God. The Bible said the tithe is holy and it's the Lord's. When you take your paycheck and you spend that tithe, you have stole from God. You better think about it that way. It's scary. Some of y'all don't take it serious enough. Somebody say, I'm gonna be serious about it. 
I'm reading it out. It, it's in the Bible. It costed Adam and Eve. It costed Ananias and Sapphire. I'll tell you, it'll bless you if you give it, but it'll curse you if you steal it. The tithes will open the windows of heaven and God will pour out blessings you ain't got room enough to receive. Amen. The, uh, the tithe will open the windows of heaven and, and, uh, yeah, and, and it, it will shut down curses. Curses can't come without a cause. And I'll tell you what, paying your tithes does. It, it shuts down the uh, devourer. Amen. I, don't, I, I do. I pray sometimes, God, rebuke, I rebuke the devourer in the name of Jesus. But God speaks to me sometimes. You don't have to do that. As long as you're a tither, as long as you're a gift, I'll take care of the devourer. Somebody help me preach. Hallelujah. I told Lisa the other day, people are going to be glad that they're givers. In the next while, you're going to be glad. There's coming an economic crisis that the world has never received, uh, seen before. There's coming a worldwide, uh, I'm telling you, it's going to happen here in America. It's going to happen worldwide. Amen. And the world is not prepared for it. The world's not under God's umbrella. They're not under God's blessing or protection. And Ecclesiastes 11, 1 through 4 that we read a little bit ago, amen, it's talking about preparing for the days ahead. How do we do that? By throwing our seed out, by giving. And, and when the evil days come, we're prepared for it. Amen, are you prepared for your future? I'll tell you with food shortages the way they are now, gas prices skyrocketing. Brother Benny Hinn wrote a newsletter the other day. He said he drives a truck pickup truck, said he pulled up to the gas tank and where he lives it costed him $130 some dollars to fill it up. With ever, there's so much uncertainty right now. You know, but there's one thing good that we, God's people, I'm glad I'm a Christian. I'm glad I ain't a thief. I'm glad I'm not a rogue. I'm glad that I'm one of God's children. I'm glad that I'm a giver. I'm glad that I'm a giver. I mean, uh, uh, glad that you're a giver. Because, you know, if I'm a giver, I've got a Jehovah Jireh on my side who supplies all my needs and watches over all my needs. Amen, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Let me ask you a question. Are you prepared for what's ahead? Are you prepared for these high... Some of y'all might have to shut down because you can't afford to put fuel in your vehicles. That's good preaching right there. You better stay blessed. Somebody shout, you, I'd better, you better stay under the blessing. Are you prepared? Your, your tithe will prepare you for it. Your tithe will fortify you. Amen. During recessions, during famines. And I'll guarantee you that if you're stealing what belongs to God, this is a guarantee, a God guarantee, a Bible guarantee. Sooner or later, the devourer's going to show up and God's the only one that can keep him away. Your shoeing him ain't gonna shoe him. Come on, your rebuking him ain't gonna rebuke him. Your tithe is the only thing that will keep the devourer off of your seed. That's the best preaching you've heard in a long time when it comes, comes to your finances. The palmer worm, the locusts, the caterpillars, the canker worms will start showing up. There'll be so many things start happening, it'll empty your accounts out faster than you put it in. Holes will come. The Bible talked about a hole coming into your bag. How many don't want God to let a hole come in your bag? A hole will come into your financial bag and suddenly empty them out. Financial crisis comes to all, not just some, but to all who steal from God. I'd rather give God what's his, wash my hands up and say, Lord, this is yours, and be clean. 
I'm not going to be a God robber. I'm not going to be still. You say, you just preach that because I'm a pastor. I have to preach it because I'm a pastor. I have to preach. I have to preach this way to keep you spiritual minded. Keep your mind on the main thing and keep God the main thing in your life. Anytime you start putting other things before God, it's going to curse you people. And the day you might be riding high, you think you got it all. Come on, you might have a few dollars in the bank and you think, well, everything's a rolling good right now, honey. Let me tell you, when the crisis comes, you're going to remember that you sat there and you got mad at a man of God for telling you the Holy Ghost truth. But I'd, I'd be afraid to say the Holy Ghost truth if it wasn't the Holy Ghost truth. I'm preaching the Word of God. Somebody shout amen. How many, wants keep, how many wants to keep God involved in your finances? Amen, when the devourer comes and he thinks, I'm gonna wipe this and out today. You, you better keep God first. Some of y'all don't believe this is important. Honey, let me tell you, I stake my life on, I've watched people for 40 some years and I've seen them be blessed and then all of a sudden it's cut off. I know some that's doing real well right now. Well, just keep watching. It don't take but one thing. It don't take but one crisis. And some of you that are on your way up right now, you don't want to start coming back down. I'm not preaching something that's a gimmick. I'm not preaching some lie. This thing works. I said, it's the truth. How many say it's the truth? Come on. It ought, to put a, it ought to put a fear on you. You know what the Bible said about the early church when Peter, when people fell dead at the apostles' feet? said fear came upon the church. A godly fear came upon the church. Hallelujah. Help me preach. I've seen people really doing good. First of all, they're doing good spiritually. God set them free from alcohol and drugs and all that mess. Come up here shaking, and all of a sudden they're free. And God go to blessing them financially. I've seen them climb and climb and get real high. But all of a sudden start backing off from the keeping God first. Honey, I love you enough to tell you the truth. I want you to be so blessed you can't stand it all. Come on, you got more than enough, but I have to tell you the other part is to stay blessed, you got to keep God first. Somebody say keep God first. If I was just preaching my own message, that'd be different, but I'm preaching the word of God. How many wants to get closer to God in your finances? How many wants God's blessings on your finances? If you don't, there's something missing in your head. Hey, man, if you don't bless God, go ahead and go broke. Go ahead and go bankrupt. Go ahead and have to let everything go back. I want God's blessing, and, and, and it's a small part for me to keep God first when I know that everything else is hinging on it. I said everything's hinging on it. Everybody say everything's hinging on it. If I was you, I'd keep my focus on the word today. I'd keep my ears open to the word because God talking to somebody in this house. And that somebody is you. I feel like he's picking me out today. Boy, that's great. I feel that way a lot of time when God gives me these messages. He's talking to me first. I mean, agree with me what I'm preaching today is the truth. The God truth, nothing but the truth. And the truth will make you free. Let's all stand. Lord, we come in Jesus' name. We ask you, Lord, this morning, get a hold of our heart. God, get a hold of us, Lord. And Lord, we want to put you first. We, we, oh, God, I would never dream of taking something that belonged to God. I wouldn't want your 10% in my checking account. It would wipe the rest of it out. Lord, it would bring the canker worm, caterpillar, locusts. It would bring all that in on my finances. And Lord, if I'm just preaching an old David Robinson thought up mean message, it'd be different. But God, I'm preaching out of your word and it's backed by the Holy Ghost of God and my angels of God. I want you involved in my finances. I want you involved 
in everything I've got. In Jesus' name, my heads is bowed. How many of y'all need to come up here this morning and, and say, Lord, uh, uh, maybe you're the best tither in the church. Amen. If you are, thank God for you.